Hello and welcome to this month's edition of Inside the Cloud. I'm Stuart Scott from Cloud Academy and this month I'll be looking at the latest features that have been released related to AWS databases. I'll be covering updates from Amazon RDS, Redshift and DynamoDB. So firstly, with a couple of points on Amazon DynamoDB. On the 16th of August, VPC endpoints became generally available. Prior to this, connectivity from your instances within your VPC to DynamoDB would have had to traverse the internet via an internet gateway, direct connect or a VPN solution. The new endpoints now enable you to create a private connection between your VPC and AWS services without going over the internet. Instead, all traffic is routed via the existing AWS global infrastructure, keeping traffic inside the AWS cloud. By using these new VPC endpoints to connect to DynamoDB instead of the internet has a number of benefits. You would no longer need an internet gateway or NAT gateway, unless other services required this, removing any NAT gateway charges. The removal of these gateways also increases security by reducing exposure of your VPC. Also, you could use IAM policies to restrict access to DynamoDB from these endpoints from specific networks or applications. More information on VPC endpoints for DynamoDB can be found here. The second point on Amazon DynamoDB was released on the 22nd of August. AWS CloudFormation now offers support for Amazon DynamoDB Accelerator, known as DAX. This essentially allows you to manage and provision DAX clusters using AWS CloudFormation through the use of templates. This gives you the ability to create, update, and delete parameter groups, subnet groups, and of course, DAX clusters themselves. For anyone unfamiliar with DAX, it's a managed, highly available in-memory cache for DynamoDB that can enhance performance from milliseconds to microseconds. Next up is the first of two points relating to Amazon Redshift. On the 23rd of August, Redshift introduced a function called Octet Length and is available in all regions. This function simply allows you to return an integer indicating the number of bytes in an input string. An existing similar function already exists called LEN, L-E-N. However, this function returns a number of characters in a multibyte string. More information on this octet length function can be found here. The second point for Amazon Redshift was released on the 23rd of August, whereby Amazon Redshift Spectrum can now support ORC and GROC file formats. This means that the power of Amazon Redshift Spectrum can now query data stored in both of these additional formats. Amazon Redshift Spectrum allows you to run SQL queries against huge amounts of data you may have stored in S3 as a data lake, which could be multiple exabytes of data in size. More information on Amazon Redshift Spectrum can be found here. Lastly, on the 24th of August, Amazon RDS for SQL Server increased its maximum database storage size to 16 terabytes. This is a huge improvement on the maximum storage sizes previously allowed, which was only set to four terabytes. To benefit from this new increased size, you must use SSD storage with provisioned IOPS. It's also worth noting that the ratio of IOPS to storage in gigabytes has increased hugely from 10 to 1 to 50 to 1. This means that with both of these changes, it may now prevent you from having to shard your data across a number of instances. Instead, it may be possible to run the workload on a single instance.